10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. Lift off of the Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon. Go NASA, go NASA, go SpaceX. Godspeed, Bob and Doug. America has launched. And so rises a new era of American space flight. And with it, the ambitions of a new generation continuing the dream. 20 seconds into flight, stage one propulsion is nominal. plus 30 seconds into this historic mission. Flying crew on board Dragon and Falcon 9 and look at them go. Falcon power telemetry nominal. M1D throttle down. We're throttling down to get ready for the period of maximum dynamic pressure. We're in the throttle bucket. Reports say all systems are go. Vehicle is supersonic. We've exceeded Mach 1 on the Falcon 9. M1D throttle up. We're throttling Max back up to full power as we're one through Bravo. Max Q. Copy, one Bravo. And we heard that one Bravo call out. That's just the second aboard zone that they're in. They'll continue to be on this until the first stage has done its job and they switch over to the second. At this point, Bob and Doug pulling about 2.3 Gs, 2.3 times the Earth's gravity, already moving at over 1,500 miles per hour. We've heard the call out for MVAC engine chill. That's getting the MVAC engine ready to light. That'll come at about 2.44 into flight. Right now, everything continuing to look good. Next major event coming up is gonna be the triple We'll have main engine cutoff of the nine first stage engines, stage separation, and then ignition of the second stage engine to continue to carry astronauts into orbit. Coming up in about 20 seconds. M M1D throttle down. We heard we're throttling down the Merlin engines on the first stage. And we have Miko. Miko. Two Alpha. Falcon stage separation confirmed. Copy, two Alpha. <laughs> MVAC ignition. All right, we have stage separation confirmed. The first stage beginning its flight back. The second stage being powered by that single Merlin 1D vacuum engine has ignited and is now carrying logs. Bob and Doug into orbit. So they're gonna continue under the power of this second stage. Stage two propulsion is nominal. Which will cut off at SECO, or second engine cut off at about eight minutes and 44 seconds into today's flight. So a little over five minutes to go still on this second stage. You heard the call out to Alpha, so they're now in the longest abort zone that carries them all the way from about North Carolina up the eastern seaboard, almost to Canada. Things looking good though, getting good call outs, nominal propul pul propulsion on that second stage. Bob and Doug continuing to make their way into orbit. Dragon SpaceX, nominal trajectory. Acquisition of signal in Bermuda. SpaceX Dragon, nominal trajectory. All right, here in nominal trajectory, so Dragon pointed in the right direction, continuing to make their flight uphill. Heard acquisition of signal Bermuda, that's one of the other ground stations that they're using to get telemetry and data back from this spacecraft. Stage two propulsion is still nominal. Little over four minutes, 40 seconds into the flight. 
Bob and Doug flying at more than 5,600 miles Dragon per SpaceX hour. Dragon SpaceX nominal trajectory. Already almost 200 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Nominal trajectory continuing. And you are watching CBC News Network as we bring you live coverage of the Falcon rocket that just launched, carrying upon it the Crew Dragon capsule, both of which creations of Elon Musk's SpaceX. A huge moment for NASA as they return to spaceflight, launching from American soil for the first time in nine years. Nicole Multilato is CBC's senior science reporter. She joins me right now to continue to discuss this. You know, Nicole, still a few more minutes here before the second stage. So far, what has stuck out for you? Uh, that it's flawless. It's been flawless. And actually, it kind of looked like they had a smooth ride. Um, it's it's it was uh, it performed exactly the way it was supposed to. And I should say that had anything gone wrong, they had the uh, launch abort system ready to go and they still have it. Because, um, you, you know, we heard earlier that uh, it would take them uh, off the coast, uh, northern coast of Canada. Uh, so this is just a fantastic launch. I, you know, I, I'm just honestly giddy with excitement. I think everybody should be um, because it is is just such a momentous occasion and it's a, a wonderful thing to see. Um, and per perhaps especially during the times we are in now with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is actually quite interesting to be watching this, uh, given the time. So many people isolated at home, really perhaps yeah. feeling a little bit hopeless. And then you have this launch of the Dragon X and on it, that, that capsule. And it brings new hope once again to so many people that are watching this. Uh, let's talk about the impact this has, though, on uh, NASA itself, because it essentially did, with some controversy, I guess, decide that it was going to pursue a different path nine years ago when it undid the shuttle program. Yeah, um, it was a little disappointing to people in the space community um, that nothing was there to replace uh, the shuttle. Uh, not that this is the first time, because Apollo, there is a gap, too, um, uh, between Apollo and the shuttle. But, um, you know, it was it took a long time, and it was controversial to, to go the private route. But here we are, and it's, it's looking pretty good, and it's saving the money, it's reusable. Um, so I think this this has uh, a lot of promise, and you know, don't forget, there's also Blue Origin on uh, on the horizon, another private uh, space uh, launch company, and that's run by Jeff Bezos from Bezos from Amazon. Uh, so there are new players here, and it's kind of opening up space. It's the new space race. Mm -hmm. and this idea that entrepreneurship will will revolutionize space, and you know, you you mentioned the the dollar figure because it was, I believe, Bob that was saying that with the space shuttle, it was basically a billion dollars every time you wanted to send a shuttle up in space. But this one, considering yeah. that it's reusable, it will make it cheaper. Absolutely, by a lot, um, and so. Um, you know, and, and it is well, uh, not just the shuttle, but also paying for flights on the, the Russian Soyuz rocket. And I mean, there there is an also another factor to this. There is, you know, American pride. You don't want to have to hitch a ride on somebody else's uh, rocket to bring your astronauts to space. So I think this is why it's such a, um, a moment of pride uh, uh, for the U.S. and for NASA and SpaceX. This is American made, American built, all American parts. And, uh, you know, it's... Uh, it's really bringing them, uh, bring it home that it's 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 launch America is which mm -hmm. is what is, this is called. Well, you, as we were listening to NASA TV, hard not to also hear in the background the many people that were cheering at just the excitement of watching that uh, rocket take off. Uh, perhaps signaling once again, as you say, a sense of pride in the American space program. Uh, we also saw a glimpse of inside the capsule, and we saw those computer screens that you were talking about. Talk to us about this development and how that changes the the interface of spacecrafts going forward. Well, it's it's, it's you know it's a lot better than those clunky buttons that, um, that they had for you know Apollo, for example, but also the space shuttle, um, and it just makes it I think a little user friendly. The astronauts themselves, Bob Benkin and, and Doug Hurley, said it took getting used to. Um, and so, but it is something new because these were shuttle astronauts, but it is high tech and it, it's, it's, um, I mean, the technology itself has brought it. Oh, look, we have, that's fantastic. Well, there let's you talk go. about that. Talk, because th this is also yes. very important what we just saw happen here. 
Uh, yes, this is the first stage of the Falcon 9 rocket, uh, the reusable part of it, that made it back and landed um, uh, successfully on the drone ship of named, of course, I still love you. Um, and uh, it's... Uh, that's 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 honestly the whole thing. It is amazing. It is an amazing step forward in uh, in launching in, in space in general because we can also take this. Let's see what's going to happen with uh, you know the the missions to the moon or the missions to Mars. Uh, SpaceX is talking about doing a jump ship just to make things. Oh, there you have the they always the astronauts always have something bring something up with them that you know when you're to show when they're in zero g and apparently uh, we have a little dinosaur there. Uh, a sparkly dinosaur at that. Yes. Right. <laughs> yeah, a sequined uh, dinosaur, uh, but uh, you know it's uh, it's great. And uh, I had a friend say to me just recently, you know, hey, Bob and Doug took off. This is fantastic. And, uh, <laughs> This is, I think, Canadians all around the country are thinking that, you know. Yeah, well, it's certainly Canadians of a certain age. When you say Bob and Doug, they, they, certainly, have, <laughs> they certainly have an idea in their mind. But in this case, we're talking yeah. about two American astronauts, as I said earlier, best friends since they entered the astronaut training program. Uh, both of them test pilots, both of them having been in space before flying on uh, separate shuttle missions, uh, and both of them actually having families as well. So this is no yeah. small feat that they are actually taking the task at hand uh, of flying this no, this capsule for the first time because again this is this is something that can be potentially dangerous it is and they know the risk as particularly as um, test pilots so you know uh, earlier um, chris hadfield commander chris hadfield our astronaut uh, the test pilot mention that that they go into it knowing what the risks are but that's not to say that safety you know is taken lightly that's why they tested over and over again the escape uh, the launch abort system so and the parachutes um so but it's scary but also speaking with their family both of them are married to uh, fellow astronauts from their their class um so the, it's a family that really understands in uh, the risk involved in in doing something like this yeah and also um when you talk about the safety precautions they took it also explains why they scrubbed the initial launch on wednesday what 17 minutes before it was meant to actually lift off yeah yeah um oh there you have the separation and the second separation um, so, yeah. Uh, and sorry, you know, Nicole, can you clarify something for me? As we look at the yeah. second separation, is every portion of this rocket intended to, to be reusable again? Is it meant to be retrievable after this launch? They are, tr this is what, this is their goal, obviously. Um, they also have the fairings that, um, so that's what, when they launch, for example, satellites, um, it protects the satellites. They have actually looked at getting, using that to be reusable as well they've got this giant ship out in the ocean uh, that success i can't remember how many times they successfully um caught those things but everything is meant to be a reusable i'm not entirely sure if that is um but they are trying to do the rest to make the entire thing uh reusable as much as they can it would certainly change the nature and and the cost of any space travel if they were to do that. So let's look forward here then, Nicole. Talk to us about uh, what we're going to be watching for in the next few hours. What are you going to be keeping an eye for as you watch this mission progress? So well, right now the 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 capsule itself, the Crew Dragon, it um, it is it functions autonomously, but the astronauts themselves will be conducting tests. Um, they will be watching and monitoring to ensure that everything is working. As you, we often hear the word when you watch a launch nominal, that is a word that means it's good. Um, so they're trying to see and ensure that everything is working nominally. And then after that comes the docking and um, that will be, I mean, it, the, the Dragon itself has been doing this for a while um, because it has been um, it has been docking with the space station, and this is the cargo ship, okay, the Dragon, um, and bringing supplies to the International Space Station with, you know, uh, over the years, no problem. So, you know, but this is a different, it's similar, but it's different. So we'll be watching to see if this, if everything goes well, if everything, all the computers do what they're meant to do and dock successfully. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you were talking about the, the potential of space travel becoming far more affordable for, well, I guess, rich people. <laughs> because yeah. it's, not well, be, it. it's not going to be affordable for you and I anytime yeah, soon. No, no. Uh, but it also does, as you say, further uh, 
possible exploration. Certainly, the, the America has, has stated that it wants to return to the moon. People keep talking about uh, a potential mission to Mars. How does this fit into the puzzle of both those? Well, um, you know, first of all, I want to say, you know, we, you know, watching 2001, for example, you know, a space odyssey, seeing people just traveling around space. Hey, you know what? It didn't happen by 2001, but it might happen by 3001. But so maybe this is the, the first step to actually taking us to being able to um, lower the price of travel, for example, in space. Uh, but going forward, um, of course.